Is this all for 15 seconds? Okay. <laughs> All right, so the growing maker movement has recently drawn some social critiques, as you can see here from this clever send-up of Make Magazine by Professor Garnet Hertz in his book series, Critical Making. For example, just how revolutionary is it to join the Arduino revolution? There needs to be space, Hertz argues, to study the social, cultural, and political implications of making. And as evidenced by yesterday's Make to Learn symposium, many within the DML community are committed to broadening participation in DIY activities for socioeconomically, racially, and ethnically diverse youth. To complement that initiative, I'm here to make a pitch for broadening that focus even further to encompass youth with disabilities. I'm going to talk about what I'm calling a mixed ability maker culture, why it's important, and how you all can support it. By mixed ability maker culture, I mean a collaborative culture within which people with and without disabilities can co-create and coexist as they, max as they work to maximize and develop their own skills. This includes making useful things for people with disabilities, but also getting people with disabilities involved in making. Um, a mixed ability maker culture is one that embraces the differences not only between people who do and do not identify as having a disability, but also the wide range of differences that exist among people with disabilities themselves. So now why is this important? So the US Department of Education reports that there are six million kids with disabilities in the public education system. And so while those six million experience disability on an individual level, our collective institutions and social practices directly impact opportunities for participation. And disability isn't an isolated social justice issue either. It intersects with race, ethnicity, income, gender, sexuality in complex ways. And those complex intersections and the challenges they pose for young people merit to more attention among all of us. And historically, as you can see here, there's been a lot of hope around new technologies being an equalizer for youth with disabilities. At the same time though, kids with disabilities are rarely portrayed as cultural producers, and special education has received little attention at DML over the years. The irony is that the technological world as we know it has been fundamentally shaped by youth with disabilities who found their way around complex systems. For example, take phone freaking, which was essentially computer hacking before there were computers. In the 1950s, blind youth like Joe and Garcia were the first to discover that they could hack the telephone system using perfect pitch to trigger automated switches. They became central figures in the phone freaking movement and in hacking history, influencing the likes of Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Maker culture and specifically 3D printing also have huge implications for assistive technology. Customized, lightweight, and easily replaceable parts, such as this 3D printed brace, open up new possibilities for mobility and experience. So cultivating a mixed ability maker culture is important because on one side, youth with disabilities are part of the past, present, and future of making. And at the same time, they have been, uh, their participation is undervalued in society and understudied in the DML community. So then, how can we support a more mixed ability maker culture? First, we can learn about making and hacking from people with disabilities themselves. I highly recommend checking out ZabritaMakesItWork.com. Again, ZabritaMakesItWork.com. A series of videos and blog posts created by a woman named Zabrita Dunham. Because mixed ability maker cu culture recognizes that different bodies produce different types of knowledge. And I can't speak on behalf of people with disabilities, and, but as an ally, I think that it's important to amplify the voices and the innovations of people like Zabrita. Second, you can support mixed ability maker culture by following the lead of those already building mixed ability maker spaces. Like the organization DIY Ability in New York City, which is co-run by John Schimmel of NYU's ITP department and Holly Cohen of NYU's Occupational Therapy Department. You can also collaborate with others. For example, at this year's Interaction Design and Children Conference in New York City, there's gonna be a workshop on, um, on evaluating accessibility and fabrication tools. And so though not designed specifically for kids with disabilities, tools like Makey Makey offer whole new ways of interacting with technology. And I'm personally at the early stages of a project looking at how parents, therapists, and special education teachers rewire and hack toys to make them more accessible as opposed to way more expensive other assistive technologies. I'm interested in how accessibility becomes hackcessibility. So novel directions for the maker movement require new ways of looking at maker culture. And a, make, a mixed ability maker culture is one committed to an equitable, ethical, and sustainable democratic future. It requires us to look closer, not only at the materiality of making, but also the social context that surrounds participation in and exclusion from it. So for people with disabilities, making can be both a hobby and a necessity. And through the lens of mixed ability maker culture, I'm hoping to prompt a serious discussion about what we talk about and what we don't talk about when we talk about maker culture. Thanks.